Exploration Saturday. I'm your host, Ebony Tyler. I have real conversations with real people about real jobs. So this week, I sat down with my good friend, Robert Tapper. Me and Rob, we met in the 90s at the University of Maryland Eastern Shore. Hawk pride. Rob shared how his love of math led him to retail, where he tells stories about the day before through numbers. For the retail giant, The Gap. In addition to having a career in the corporate space, Rob owns several businesses. As a tax preparer, he encourages the liberated success community to be transparent about our financial life with knowledgeable individuals so that we can get what's owed to us from the federal government. We had a very candid conversation. All right, let's jump right in. This week, my guest is Robert Tapper. He goes by Rob. By day, he's a senior finance manager for Gap Inc., but during nights and weekends, he's also an entrepreneur with businesses in tax preparation, online retailing, and consulting. Rob has over 20 years of professional experience working in finance, entertainment, and retail apparel industries. Combined with his bachelor's degree from the University of Maryland Eastern Shore and an MBA from Fordham University. He has worked and helped build brands such as Rockaware, Macy's, Levi's, Polo, and of course, The Gap. Rob was born in Maryland, but raised in Philly and New Jersey. He is married and the father of two girls. Welcome, Rob. Welcome to Career Exploration Saturday. I'm so glad to have you. Thank you. Thank you, Ev. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. So first question that I always like to ask all my guests is, you know, tell us who Rob was at 16. Did you have it all together? Did you know what you wanted to be when you grow up? Well, at 16, let me see. I was a, uh, entering what my junior year in high school. Um, so I was, I was, I was heavy into sports. Um, I felt like, yeah, I had it all together. You know, I was a varsity, I was a varsity letter sports and swimming cross country. Um, play baseball. Um, I was getting grades good enough to get into college. So college was definitely part of my plans at that, you know, at that age. Um, I would say though, in, in, in my heart, you know, I, I wanted to probably work in, work in sports, probably be a professional, you know, probably still had dreams of being a professional athlete at that time in my life. And if not working in sports was probably in my heart. However, where my strength was at that time in my life was definitely in the math and sciences. And I was definitely following a track um, to probably pursue a career uh, or major even in college um, around the sciences and particularly engineering. Yeah, I remember you um, always in the math building. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you get from um, the University of Maryland Eastern Shore to um, working because you said that you worked at you know different brands so how did you pivot from being a math major at Eastern Shore graduating to working at a brand because I remember you worked at a, a popular brand back in the 90s yeah my um you know majoring in math I think was, was one of the best things that I ever did originally I you know again I started as an engineer actually when I went to Lincoln University right out of right out of high school um and then I, tran I ended up transferring from Lincoln University um, to University of Maryland Eastern Shore, uh, where I met you, of course. Um, but I also, when I transferred, I switched my major to major in math education. At the time, I wanted to be actually a math teacher. Mm -hmm. um, but then, you know, just some personal things, um, you know, happened uh, to me during my college years that I really just wanted to focus on the math so I can get out of school as fast as possible okay. <laughs> and focus okay. on my strength. And so I, I left with a degree in math and it did open up a lot more doors for me outside of education, um, finance, uh, business. And so I ended up, my first job out of school was actually in finance doing, um, I was actually chasing down Wall Street criminals, doing a lot of auditing um, with, with financial, you know, with the finance firms and, and doing um, trading, trading investigations with, stock, with the stock market and things like that. Um, 
so they gave me a nice business foundation. And, um, you know, while I was actually working on Wall Street, uh, 9-11 happened. And 9-11 just completely shook up my world. Um, it just made me rethink, you know, happiness in terms of, you know, what I do daily, my nine to five, and um, really reflect on, on sort of where, where my career was headed. And it caused me to, allowed me to take some chances. Um, and so I ended up leaving finance and, and trying to pursue uh, things that careers and, and entrepreneurial endeavors that I was more passionate about. And um, my passion at that time was really about uh, streetwear apparel and working in the clothing industry and dreams of even having my own apparel store, clothing store one day. Um, just, just, I've just made a complete pivot and, and just started to hustle in, into that organization and try to build, build a network. And, and it, during that journey, I actually ended up going back to school uh, to get my MBA and, and even and even uh, further uh, build up my foundation in, in, in business and, and really try to gear that business acumen to marketing and apparel and entertainment because I felt like at the time too streetwear was very much all of those things right business entertainment music fashion was all colliding at once and I just wanted to you know get as much knowledge and experience that I could um, and try to dictate more of where I could, where I could go uh, from a company or, or even career standpoint. Now you said that you were focused on your strengths, right? And uh, that math was your strength. Now you, but you pivoted to finance and business. Can you talk a little bit about like what skills in addition to math skills that a young person should have if they're interested in finance or interested in going into business or, you know, um, interested in crunching those numbers. I know it's not just, you know, being a strong math student. There's other things that you need. Yeah, I think I think with with math and the sciences, you know, you're always going to have if, if you just love the pure science of of the of the numbers or or, or just science literally, there's always going to be a place for somebody to just put you in a corner and have you do a bunch of uh, calculations or experiments and things like that. I think where you start to find broader opportunities and leverage those analytical skills are when you're able to tell stories about the numbers and you're able to translate numbers into um, stories that, that are relative to the audience you're trying to, you're trying to communicate what those numbers mean, you know? Um, that's, 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 that's where you really elevate, you know, you have to understand, you have to understand the, the analysis. You have to be able yeah. to, to, um, Sometimes, you know, with numbers or finance, you know, you're selling someone on a big idea as to why someone should invest a million dollars, right? Um, or, or what type of idea can make a million dollars and how, and you need the numbers to back you up. You need the numbers really more as evidence um, to sometimes back up these stories. Um, and so I think that's key. It's just storytelling, you know, and, and, and being re well rehearsed in, 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 in telling stories around the data and around the numbers, um, whether that's talking about money um, or talking about uh, business plans or even talking about data when it comes to uh, percent of populations as we're going through with COVID. And, and, and think about all the numbers and the data that's out there around you know, something like COVID when you're talking about demographics of ages mm -hmm. and um, you know, percentages of contraction versus death. You know, how do you, how do you tell all with all that data? How do you cut through all of that and tell a very clear, crystal clear story about what's really going on? Um, I think that's the difference between, um, I would say just being strong in math, but having a career that, that revolves around mathematics um, and, 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 and the sciences for, particularly for sure. Now pre, Corona, since you brought up the Rona, um, what was um, a typical day like for you? For me, um, usually get up in the morning. Um, I like to pray with my family before we walk out the house. Um, I, I, I drive my daughter to school. I used to, when I was younger, I was always ambitious and tried to be the first one in the office. Um, but like you said earlier, with 20 years experience, um, I've rebalanced uh, my work life. Uh, at, the, at the place that I was in right pre-COVID and I was putting a little more, more energy into my family first. Um, so, you know, getting into work, typical like 8.30, 9 o'clock. Um, 
you know, what happened yesterday. Retail is about what happened yesterday, you know? So we're looking at uh, first thing in the morning, I'm analyzing the sales from the day before, um, seeing what sold, what didn't sell, what do we need to do in order to uh, change, change the direction if, if it's not, if it's not a, going in a good direction um, or figure out how to maintain the momentum if, if things are doing well. Um, you know, I have a team under me um, that does a lot of the an analysis. Um, mm -hmm. And again, I'm just giving them guidance on, you know, how to look at the data, what to look for, um, how to communicate it. Um, and, and that's pretty much my, you know, we, we do a lot of ad hoc projects. I'll, I'll give you an example. Um, you know, Kanye West, I don't know if you guys read about it, but, you know, he, he signed a, uh, a deal with The Gap. Uh, about mm -hmm. two weeks ago. Yeah, we heard. And it was very, it was very controversial. And I, and I'm also a member of the African American Network Group at the Gap. And you know, we we were asked, uh, the Black Employee Network was asked, you know, to give input on the partnership with uh, with Easy. And it was a very divided uh, divided room in terms mm -hmm. of whether or not we should go forward with somebody who's vol as volatile as that. Um, and so even when somebody like Yeezy makes comments like he's running for president, I actually am able to tell if it's impacting our sales positively wow. or negatively. Um, and if I do see trends like that, you know, it's, it's my role to bubble that up to senior leadership so that um, we can sometimes make contingency plans, um, whether, that, whether that's in the form of PR or marketing or um, preparing for what could happen uh, right. as, as, an, as an early indicator of, 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 of certain customers that it, it could bring to the gap and make our business stronger or yeah. cause customer my, you know, customer flight, you know, because they're, they're turned off in terms of what he may stand for or, or, or not stand for, so to speak. So um, I'm constantly watching different metrics like traffic to stores, um, brand health, brand search, um, regional, regional, regional trends. Like when Florida has all this COVID breakout, we see our sales drop significantly in mm -hmm. Florida and we try to do things that mitigate that risk. Um, so it's really with retail, there's not, there's not one day alike, you know, it's, it's, okay. it, it is, it is very, and which is what I love about retail in, in the corporate environment is that um, no two days are alike and it, and it is a lot of times based on yesterday you know we learn from yesterday to try to apply it to tomorrow mm -hmm. um, and 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 people drive that right and so it, it's trying to predict what the people are looking for and what the people are demanding and it kind of creates somewhat of a thrill of the chase and thrill of the hunt kind of culture um, but it's, it's very very aggressive and very very demanding at the same time now you said something that I wasn't actually um, I wasn't expecting you to to, to say um, is that you're part of an affinity group um, at you know your place of employment in a corporate setting and what's that like do you find that that affinity group is necessary um, for you to be able to have a space to be able to process what it's like to be a black person in 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 such a corporate space. Some people do use it for that. Me personally, uh, I've always been connected to them, um, probably even since high school. Um, you know, again, even when I was interested in this, the math and sciences, I was part of a, a, a young black uh, engineering um, program mm -hmm. uh, for high school kids. So I've always felt like that was really, really helpful for me going through all of these phases that it just makes your worlds feel smaller. You know, when you have, when you're part of organizations that you're able to kind of build relationships uh, laterally to sort of the experiences that you're going through, I, I find it very helpful. You know, at Macy's, um, I was very involved with their black employee network group and it allowed me to travel to Atlanta a lot to recruit, recruit college kids to come in. It helped me network within the organization that's very, very large, you know, so it makes the organization a lot smaller. And it, it gives you a support system because you're going through similar things of, you know, maybe office biases. You know, you can kind of you can kind of share experiences where you might run into some biases, um, or need to just bounce off ideas or perceptions, right? And, and get some clarity, um, and have that sounding board. I think in, in confidentiality is is, is really really uh, it's really helpful. You know, especially when you. When you're in these big corporations and the further you go up, you know, the less 
uh, we see of us, um, it, it helps as a, you know, it, it, it helps kind of keep us energized and also gives me, gives me an avenue too to give to, to, to also share my experiences with some of the younger, some of the younger individuals coming into these large organizations as well. Yeah. So um, I think we spent enough time on your corporate space and your corporate job, but um, share with us about you being an entrepreneur. I mean, I know you, you run several, you own several businesses. Tell us about them. <laughs> yeah, I've been, um, I've been an entrepreneur probably since, since high school, you know, selling newspapers and it's it just something that stuck with me was always, always having multiple streams of income. Yep. Um, and I was instilled into me from young. And um, one thing that I, that my father taught me when I was young was how to do taxes. I, I literally was doing tax because I was working. So, you know, you're working at 14. I worked at 14, 15, 16 years old, you know, fast food, Kmart, stuff like that. And uh, my father taught me how to do my taxes, my own taxes back then. And so I've been doing taxes now for almost 30 years. Right. Um, so it was just a natural, uh, opportunity for me to help others uh, with their tax preparation, um, starting with family and just been branching out and, uh, you know, work for several f uh, firms and organizations like, you know, Jackson Hewitt and, and, and even some other uh, large um, independent firms. But, um, you know, now I do, I do, I, you know, I have my own practice and, um, you know, I really enjoy helping people um, get their, get, get what's, what they're owed, you know, from the federal government. Cause a lot of times, people aren't aware of, of, of sort of what they're entitled to because um, we, we pay so much in taxes and, 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 a lot, and there's, there's um, so many different opportunities on how to leverage the tax code if you're knowledgeable about it. Um, so that's, that, you know, that's something I'm very, very passionate about. Um, you know what, I'll share, I'll share something personal with uh, our uh, viewers here. Um, there was a time where I was audited several times on my taxes. And once Rob started doing my taxes, I have not been audited. And, and we've had a very uh, professional tax relationship for a while now. And I find having someone that you trust to do your taxes is, uh, it's, it's very important. So how could, you know, how can uh, folks get at you if they're interested in your services? Well, you could definitely, you know, email me at, at robert.tapper at gmail.com. Um, I'm very responsive to email, you know, in this day and age uh, with COVID. Um, it's very easy to help someone with taxes, you know, over Zoom, over, over FaceTime. Um, you know, we, we have ways that you can update, you, upload your documents to the cloud and, and everything is secure, um, especially with uh, identity theft and things like that going on. Um, so so we, we maintain, you know, a very high level of uh, security and, and, and care uh, with, with people's personal and fin financial documents for sure. But, but again, robert.tapper um, at gmail.com. Um, Looking soon, really, to expand uh, this model. Um, actually, just talked to a partner today, and and we're looking at um, adding additional services in terms of helping individuals um, start their businesses properly with the right uh, debt, you know, legal paperwork in terms of LLC designation or, or incorporations to trademark uh, filing, and of, of course, bookkeeping, accounting, and tax preparation. So. Um, Look out for that soon as well. Um, that, that's something that we're really excited about uh, launching this fall. And you said your dad taught you how to do taxes and you've been doing taxes for 30 years? Yeah, yeah, I've given up my age a little bit, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but you know what, that's, that's a skill. You know, yeah. and that's a skill that they don't teach in school. Yep. And yep. you learned how to do this from your dad. Was your dad a, um, a, an accountant? He, uh, he he actually um, he did graduate. He also is a graduate of an HBCU, University of Maryland Eastern Shore. Uh, he graduated with a business degree, uh, had a decent career in insurance for a while. But it was just something I think that he was taught. I think by his father. Wow. Uh, you know, back back in the day, all you had to do was go get the form from the post office, right? And uh, you know, you would get the form from the post office and you would fill it out, and it was really that simple. And then. Um, you know, as you learn more and you do more complicated taxes, you know, with, with individuals that own homes and, 
to investing and uh, go through messy things like divorce or death in the family or, or financial hardships where they take out, um, you know, retirement money as an example. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, just, you just learn so much. And again, so yeah. a lot of tax preparers are also life counselors, believe it or not, because <laughs> um, we see so much, you know, and it's very personal. And I, and I understand sometimes people are hesitant to do their taxes with people they know because um, money is very private to people. So I do appreciate that, that you have the courage and humility, you know, to, to use somebody that, that you know, because I, I, I find that, um, you know, sometimes us as a people too, we're very guarded around, around our, our financial uh, history and in our financial lives. And so I just encourage people, the more transparent you are about your financial life, the more opportunities that, that you'll come across and the more insight and, 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 and knowledge that you'll also avail yourself to. And, and I encourage everybody to, to, to have the courage and the humility to just, to just really open up uh, their financial lives to others that have the knowledge and the skills to help, to help improve it. Cause we can all, we all have areas that we can improve our financial, our financial lives for sure. And now, intact, I intact, as I would say is like the gateway. It's the gateway for sure. It's the gateway. Mm-hmm. Now I know you have other businesses. Do you want to share a little bit about those businesses? Yeah, just uh, you know, at the in the midst of, in, in the midst of COVID, uh, me and my daughter actually started a, a mask business. Um, so we're making masks for friends and family. Exploded, um, almost wiped us out. <laughs> um, and, and as a result, we did we you know we were doing it uh, through word of mouth, but we were able to get it online. Um, and so we have a uh, we ha- we make masks. We have an online store. Uh, the online store is www.tapadon.com, T-A-P-P-A-D-O-N.com. Uh, you can go on there. We have over probably 40 different styles of masks uh, and fabrics. We do customization. If it's not there, ask us. You know, we do, we've done things for uh, breast cancer awareness to uh, local hospitals to um, little mom groups even. So yeah, it's 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 really cool. We're trying to expand that. I see the sewing well. machine in the back. <laughs> yes, that's uh, my, my one of my daughter's main workstations right there. Um, yeah. So yeah, so you know, just just um, you know, where there's opportunities, uh, you know, we we I try to capitalize on them. Um, and then I do business consulting. You know, there's a lot of people out here trying to start clothing lines, mm-hmm. uh, and and so like I've. You know, again, I have an MBA in business, so I'm pretty pretty good at, at uh, helping small businesses with uh, business planning, um, expense forecasting, um, strategic planning, even when it comes to marketing. Um, so, you know, I offer that service as well. Um, but I would say that, you know, primarily I do focus on apparel brands um, or entertainment or entertainment brands for sure. Nice. So that's I, yeah, so I'm pretty busy, pretty busy. You are. I, I mean, so look. You know, it, it, it sounds to me that you're very successful and that you're successful in multiple different ways. But this is just me looking, you know, on the outside looking in, right? How do you define career success? Do you think you have achieved career success? Um, how would you... Um, you know, share with a young person who's out here, you know, trying to to, to just focus on, you know, on money. Um, Because it it, it sounds, your your journey sounds pretty amazing. Um, But is there anything that you want to share with young people or, you know, talk a little bit about um, what does career success mean to you? Yeah, I would say... It, it's working in corporate America for 20 years is, is definitely um, you're going to have a lot of ups and you're going to have a lot of downs, I, you, know, you know, and I'll share with the audience that, you know, it, it wasn't always easy. You know, I've, I've been fired twice um, in, in my 20 year professional career. Um, I've, I've walked, I've walked away from jobs, just literally quit without, without a job, you know, without another job lined up. And, and that's with the family. Um, and so you'll find that, you know, you have to take risks and you also have to be okay with failing, you know, because I, I find that failing is, is the best teacher, the best teacher for me. And again, everyone learns differently, but I always even encourage my, you know, my, my staff to fail quickly, 
and apply that learning forward, you know, um, and just make sure we don't make the same mistakes twice. And, and so I think, I think just having courage and, and having the ability to bounce back, having tough skin um, and, and just finding that thing that, that motivates you because you're going to run up, up against a lot of stumbling blocks, against a lot of mean people, you know, and um, you know, you, you have to find sort of that, that inner, that inner strength, to kind of power you through. Um, for me, success, I, I, I still, I'm, I, I think because I'm, because I'm, I don't consider myself successful yet, I think that's what keeps me going. Um, you know, I, I'll tell you too, sometimes I feel like I'm Jackie Robinson out here um, trying to be the first black male to ascend to certain levels corporately, you know, and there's days where I have to, ask myself, is that something that I really want to do? Because the commitment to do that um, on some days doesn't feel worth it. Um, and, and because there are opportunities uh, to do your own thing, um, there, there's some very hard choices uh, along the way. And, and, and I would say there's probably some, some choices upcoming for me that, I, that I'm definitely going to have to continue to, to constantly evaluate for sure. Well, you know, Rob, I, I, I think we're going to leave it there, but I'm going to just uh, repeat what you said. You said, fail quickly and uh, apply that knowledge forward. I like that. <laughs> Thank you, Rob. This was great. Thanks, Ebony. It's great being here. So some key takeaways from my conversation with Rob. Affinity groups are important. They help you build lateral relationships with your peers. They help you build a support system so that when you're dealing with bias, you got some backup, right? You have some place to go and talk about these things, right? And that is okay to lead into your blackness in the corporate space. We don't got to fold ourselves up. We don't got to do that. And two, sharing your talents with your children can lead to a stream of revenue for your family. I'm really inspired by Rob's father teaching him how to do his taxes when he was 14. That's some real legacy for you right there. And lastly, if you're going to fail, fail quickly and apply that knowledge forward. Amen to that. This week's shout outs go to Dina, Pam, and Ann. Thank you for your donations to Liberated Success. We are growing and your donations are helping us build. Now remember, it's going to take a community to get this work done. We're continuing with the GoFundMe campaign and some folks have even started to type to us. They got us in their budget. That's some real black love for you right there. And I'm very appreciative of it. So you know where the GoFundMe link is. It's in my bio on IG. It's the first comment on Facebook. And it's a pinned tweet on Twitter. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. So this week, we launched our TikTok challenge. And it's open to everyone. We're giving away $25 cash app to create a 60 second video about one of three scenarios. So these are the scenarios. So the first one is you're participating in a virtual interview for a summer internship. You should be highlighting your strengths, your weaknesses, and talking about how you're gonna learn from this. And you can get it done in 60 seconds. You guys are amazing on TikTok. I'm, TikTok is like, this is the place I go to get find joy. The second, the second scenario is you're at work, you work on a team, but you can't start your work until your other teammate gets there. And that person is always late. How are you going to handle it? 60 seconds. Tell us how you're going to handle it. Make it funny. And third, you're back in high school. You're about to sit down with your guidance counselor, but you're super nervous because you have no idea what you want to do after high school. I want you to talk about how you're feeling in that moment, what's going through your head, 60 seconds, 60 seconds, make it dramatic. So the contest is open from now until August 4th. And uh, we're really excited about this. And we have all the information up on our Facebook page and on our Instagram page. Lastly, if you have a career journey that you want to share with our Liberated Success community, please reach out. We've got some great interviews lined up. Some really amazing people have connected me um, 
I don't I don't want to share too much because sometimes I'm a little nervous. What if it doesn't happen? But I'm so inspired by the talent that is out there in our community. And it's just so important for young people to see themselves in so many different occupations so that they know that they can do it. And what does it take to do it? You know, real conversations with real people about real jobs. All right. So you know what we got to do? We got to wear our masks. We got to wash our hands. We got to socially distance because we need to be here. And all Black Lives Matter. And if you're not registered to vote, go vote. Register to vote. We cannot be here next year doing this. We got to get back to life, to a new what the world is post Rona. I don't know about you, but I'm getting a little frustrated by this. Um, but that's okay. That's like a whole nother, uh, that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother video. All right. Go enjoy your Saturday. We'll talk soon. See you next week. Bye. Baby, good. One whole day to play. Come on, everybody.